Welcome back to 28storms.com on this Saturday evening, June 9th. We're going to mention the tropics here in a little bit, but we're also going to extensively cover the flooding that is already underway along the central Gulf Coast state, so let's dive right into both of these topics. In the previous video uploaded a couple days ago, we noted that there was going to be extreme rainfall potential with the threat of flooding, and that has definitely come about here across Mobile and Pensacola and a lot of people are uploading their photos on social media websites. If you've got any that you would like to share with 28storms.com, just go ahead and send it to us through Facebook or Twitter. And this is going to be a threat that lasts into the overnight hours through Sunday. So let's break down some of the weather features. Beginning with the Atlantic Visible Satellite shot, there's a few different things that may catch your eye. First and foremost, here's the convection blooming here across the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to touch more on that in just a second. But also in the West Atlantic, we see this cold front draped across here into the Bahamas. No development as anticipated there. And over in the southeast corner of your screen, we see that the intertropical convergence zone is trying to rise a little bit more toward the north, but any tropical wave that continues westward into the Caribbean is going to be sheared apart. More on the tropical cyclone development potential over the next 10 days and a few moments, but this is the main concern over the next 36 hours. We still have this significant moisture plume rising out of the central and northern Gulf of Mexico, and it's flowing straight into the Gulf Coast states. Mobile, Alabama has already recorded over 15 inches of rainfall as of the latest report from the National Weather Service near the airport and those rainfall totals are actually a little bit higher just to the south of Mobile into the smaller towns like Irvington and Grand Bay and Pensacola has also gotten hit hard with over 12 inches of rainfall and we're in a slight break especially out in Mobile, Alabama but also notice as we look to, toward southeast Louisiana, including New Orleans, there's another flare-up of convective activity, and this is going to continue moving eastward. As you can see, we have this stalled-out frontal boundary, and more importantly, we still have this second upper-level spin that is making its way across the northwest gulf. This is helping to kick off more shower and thunderstorm activity out ahead of it, and that is going to make for a very wet Sunday. And this is being advertised quite well by both the NAM and GFS forecast models. Now the global models, they don't have the best handle on convective activity, but at the very least both of these are suggesting several more inches of rainfall. And we already have a very saturated ground at this point with over a foot of rain in some locations. So it won't take half as much rain that we've already received for there to be even more significant flooding, especially in areas that receive any training over a period of several hours. Here is a look at the latest radar animation as of 7 p.m. Central Time. The good news is that Pensacola and Mobile, including areas in South Mississippi near Gulfport and Biloxi, all these areas are receiving a slight break in the rain at this time, and that is going to allow for some of those waters to recede just a little bit. But here we go with another convective blow up across southeast Louisiana, and this is not going to be the last one. As we saw on the water vapor just a few minutes ago, this is going to be a prolonged period of rainfall with several more rounds developing in the Gulf and then pushing northward. And finally, this is the Doppler radar estimated rainfall from the Mobile site. And it shows quite well the two areas that have received the maximum rainfall so far. You've got Mobile and Pensacola. And Pensacola is still under a flash flood warning at this hour. In fact, the Scambia County, including the city of Pensacola, is under a level one state of emergency and I would not at all be shocked to see areas that are over 20 inches once this whole event is finally over. As we return to the deep tropics, a quick look into the eastern Pacific shows that the National Hurricane Center is in fact now monitoring a weak area of low pressure. They're giving the system a 30 percent chance of development over the next 48 hours and as we take a more zoomed in look on the visible satellite imagery you can already make out that broad low level spin with convection surrounding the center of circulation so this disturbance does look fairly healthy for this current time and the water vapor shows that the dry air really isn't all that bad so this system does have some potential to become possibly a weak tropical cyclone but the good news is that this particular storm is moving west and away from land so we're not too worried about this one the 850 millibar low level vorticity analysis also shows the disturbance to the south of Mexico. And the wind shear profile also shows a favorable upper level ridge axis located above the disturbance. You can also see this well on the color representation with the blue areas denoting wind shear values less than or equal to 20 knots. But also pay attention to the areas of the eastern Pacific to the east of this disturbance the wind shear values are actually fairly favorable throughout the eastern Pacific Basin at this time. 
Now as we switch over to some of the latest dynamical model guidance, first starting with the GFS forecast of vertical wind shear for the next seven days, you see that initially the model does correctly show the favorable upper level winds in the eastern Pacific and interestingly enough it continues to show favorable winds just to the south of Mexico throughout the next six to seven days and as we can see here by 180 hours you begin to make out the developing tropical cyclone that the model has progged to the south of the Baja Peninsula. Furthermore the day 7 850 millibar vorticity representation of things shows two distinct or possibly even three distinct areas worth monitoring for development You've got the first area well out over to the eastern Pacific that we're not overly concerned about, but it also has this developing tropical storm or potentially even minimal hurricane sitting to the south of the Baja. And finally, by day seven, it also has our first tropical disturbance of the season beginning to push into the Yucatan Peninsula. And this would bear some watching if it sat over the northwest Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico within the next five to ten days. Switching over now to the reliable ECMWF model, we see that initially there really isn't much in the tropics, although you can make out the upper level disturbance that is causing the flooding rain along the central Gulf Coast. And as we advance into day one, two, three, and four, there's still not a whole lot going on, but as we go into the medium range, that is when things really begin to heat up, relatively speaking. We see our first signs of a tropical cyclone beginning to develop here by day seven well out into the eastern Pacific, but also notice that we have this broad trough diving across the desert southwest, and if this trough were to amplify, then that would be something for Mexico to consider, because if that trough does move that far south, it could eventually pick up this developing storm, as you see in this extended range model run, and also here by day eight, so this is now Sunday morning, we have this broad area of low pressure being modeled, very similar to what the GFS was depicting, and finally into day nine and day 10, we still are dealing with this persistent tropical cyclone in the model out here in the eastern Pacific and we still have this broad area of low pressure to be monitoring at this point in the central Gulf of Mexico. Naturally we are at least several days away before we can become even halfway confident that anything will develop into a tropical depression or storm in the Gulf not only because the models are barely showing much of an area of low pressure just yet, but also because this is an extended forecast. You're looking at beyond the seven day forecast time period. So we're asking for a lot if you want the models to be 100% correct at this point in time. But at the very least, the overall weather pattern does support the idea of at least some central Gulf or Northwest Caribbean mischief. Anytime you've got some 500 millibar ridging over the central United States or the Great Lakes area, the Gulf and the Caribbean is a hot spot that normally bears watching. And finally, what could also add some fuel to the fire down the road is the Madden-Julian oscillation. Right now, the phase that supports tropical cyclone activity is located out across the Indian Ocean and Western Pacific, as you can see denoted by the green colors but in roughly 10 to 15 days the positive pulse should be moving into the eastern Pacific and Gulf of Mexico and this could also be the reason why the models are at least beginning to show a couple disturbances down the road. So please keep it tuned to the Hurricane Tracker app along with 28storms.com for more updates. As you can see if you go to 28storms.com at the moment we have the Facebook widget near the top of the page and this is where we post a lot of our video content and brief weather updates including photos of the flooding that is underway across the central Gulf Coast. We've even uploaded our exclusive 28storms.com video of some of the flooding that has taken place across the Mobile, Alabama metro earlier this afternoon. We will also be out in the field once again tomorrow if the flooding situation worsens. And finally, of course, you can also find our exclusive video analysis at the lower half of the page. So that is all we have for now at this time. Check back at 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app for more updates.